Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long-time speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now, we have our own Cal Evans, and he's going to talk about RFCs from the future. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Cal some feedback. Cal, take it away. Welcome to RFCs from the future, future, future. Hey, today we're going to be talking about a new feature that is coming in PHP 7.1 called Closure from Callable. Now, before we get into it, I need to define a couple of terms. First of all, what is a callable? Well, a callable in PHP is just a way to assign a variable name to a function, pass that around, and if you add parentheses onto the end of it, PHP goes and says, is this actually a function that I know? And if so, it will execute the function. You can see that on the left um, side right now. I define a function called myfunc. And all my funk does is echo out procedural hello world. Now, I create the variable callable and I assign to it the string my funk. Now, it has to be exactly spelled exactly right and capitalization does matter. And But then I can make a call to um, callable, the variable, and it will execute my funk. Now, the object-oriented version is over on the right-hand side. I define a class called my callable. Inside the class, I define my funk, and it echoes out object-oriented hello world. Now, I have to instantiate the object, and then the callable is no longer just a string. It's an array with a, the variable that is the instance of the class and then the um, method name to call. And again, case matters. And from there, I can make the call to callable by adding the parentheses on the end, and it will execute obj my funk and echo out to the screen object oriented hello world but now callable is just a variable that i can pass around and i can make this call um, anywhere in my code so that's what a callable is a closure is php's implementation of an anonymous function they uh, php gives us a class with several static method called closure, but any time we create a closure, it actually instantiates that class, but the class not only has the code that we create, but the static methods that PHP gives us. Now, to create a closure, we still use a variable. We say, uh, in this case, I've got dollar sign greet, that's my variable, but instead of giving it just a string that is a um, method or a function name, I'm actually defining a function and assigning it to dollar sign greet. You can see that right here on the left hand side. I've got a function and in parentheses I am passing in a parameter that will be called name. Now notice the function itself has no name because this is an anonymous function. And inside that all I do is print um, hello carriage return and whatever you pass in. Now, down below that, you'll see I can instantiate, or I, I can um, run this by making a call to dollar sign greet with the parentheses, and I can hand in world or PHP. It will say hello world. It will say hello PHP. If I do a print R on greet, though, I'm not just going to get a string that says that um, has a function name like I would on a callable. If I print R on a closure, I'll get what you see over on the right-hand side. I'll get the fact that closure is an object and it takes one parameter. Now, PHP knows a lot more about it, but this is the information it gives us if, it, if we do a print R. The important thing to note is this is an actual object and it has a type of, um, a type of closure. And, and so PHP knows what to do with this as opposed to a callable, which is just a string or an array. That's going to be important in just a minute. So what do we have? Well, Dan Aykroyd, uh, one of our core developers, gave us this new function. This has already been voted on, and this is um, it actually in the beta for PHP 7.1 now. Um, it, it is implemented. And what he gave us is a new method in the closure object called callable from closure. Uh, I'm sorry, closure from callable. Why is this important? Because we can do everything with callables that we need to do. You know, closures are nice, but um, they're not necessary. Well, 
they help us an awful lot. And the first thing they help us with is giving us errors in the right place. Let me show you that. Now, on the left-hand side, I create a function called foo, and I echo inside foo, I echo out hello world. Now, I create a callback, a variable, with food. I'm trying to create a callable, but I misspell it, and I spell it food instead of foo. Now, this can happen way up at the beginning of my code, and way down near the bottom, I actually call callback. Well, I'm going to get an error because there is no um, function food. I mistyped it, but my error happens way down at the bottom, and it, it could happen. Uh, I could have created this in a total different place in the code, in a library that I don't even maintain, and so I wouldn't really understand what's happening if this is happening in a library that I don't maintain. On the right, you'll see the using um, from callable, and we cr still create function foo, echo hello world, and, but we set our callback to a closure, and we use the static method from callable, and we pass in our misspelled function name, food. Well, the error is going to happen right there. We're going to get an error that we can catch, and it's going to say this food is not valid as a um, function name. And then it doesn't matter if I've got a whole lot more code before I call it because the errors already happened and either I've dealt with it or I've closed out and said I can't do this until somebody fixes it. Hopefully your unit tests will catch this very quick. So the second thing it gives us is exposing private um, functions or private methods. Um, if you use protected or private methods in your class, you know that there are times when it would be really handy to be able to expose that um, functionality anyhow. Now, there's, there are ways you can do it, but this gives us a nice, handy way to expose those private functions, and that's by wrapping them in a um, closure. So here I've got, and I, this is straight from the RFC. I've got a class called validator, and there's one public function, get validator callback. And get validator callback um, takes in one parameter, which is the validation type. And if that validation type is email, then it's going to create a closure using this as the object and email validation as the um, function name or the method name. And if it's the validation type's not email, then it's just going to return the generic validator. Now, both of those, email and generic, are private functions, okay? But we can still expose them because we're wrapping them in a closure. You can see over here, I instantiate my validator, I get my call back and I pass in email, which means it's gonna return this, and then I can make a call to the callback and pass in an email address and it will uh, you know, validate our email address or run whatever code we have um, defined in there. So wrapping private functions allows us to keep more control over those um, methods, but still expose them when it's convenient for us. And finally, the third performance, uh, third um, pro problem that this solves is performance. Now, this isn't so much a problem that is solved. This is an oh by the way. See. If you're using callables right now, then you're assigning a variable to a, either a string or an array that points to a function. But since it's a callable and a, just a generic type, either string or array, every time you use it, PHP has to go through checks to make sure that it is actually callable and that it can find that um, function to call. If you're using a closure, PHP says, oh, that's a closure. Remember I showed you that closure was an object? PHP says, that's a closure. I can skip all of that checks. And what Dan found out was that it's actually about a 16% increase in um, performance. Now, he wrote a tight for loop that counts to 100,000 and makes a call using a callable and a call using a closure. And each of those um, nested eight levels deep, okay? We don't normally write code like that in production, but 
it is nice to know that in everything that they're doing, the core is trying to squeeze just a little more performance out. And if you're using callables right now, you might want to consider using closures instead just because that gives you just a little bit much more. And you know, if you're running 100 lines of code and you're calling it um, once a minute, that performance gain is not going to be very important. But the more traffic you get onto your um, site or the more times your application is actually executed, the more that performance gain is going to add up. Well, the question was asked on the RFC, why not simply give a function name FN that is a language construct and just make this easy? Well, you know, that, that would have been pretty easy to do, but as Dan points out in this, this would actually pollute the global namespace because you're actually adding yet another method name that, or, or uh, function name in the global namespace. And if you are running procedural code and you actually have a function called FN, it wouldn't run in PHP 7, it wouldn't even compile because FN now would, be, would now be a um, protected method name. If you insist on having a global function called FN that does this for you, you can easily write it in userland. Okay, to just put that at the top of one of your um, files that you include everywhere, and boom, you're right back to writing PHP 4 code. But you've got the, um, you know, you, you've got this functionality available to you, but it's not polluted the global namespace. They added it to the closure object that was the most logical place for it, and they made it a static. Uh, method, so you don't have to instantiate anything. You can just use it as a static method. That's all I've got. Um, PHP 7.1 is in beta. If you're not playing with it, I strongly urge you to download it, install it somewhere in a container, and start testing your code on it. If you've got unit tests um, on your code, it should be very easy to prove that your code's going to work um, with PHP 7.1. If you don't have unit tests on your code, well, you got bigger problems than 7.1 can solve. Hey, thanks to everybody for tuning in, and we will see you next time on RFCs of the Future. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit JoinedIn and leave Cal some feedback.